Okay, so today we're doing a free weight only routine. So this is gonna help you guys that have a more back to basics approach, maybe have simpler gear or a home gym. I'm starting off with the barbell squat. The aim here is to get 12 to 20 reps with a controlled cadence. So as per Mike Mensa's recommendation, just due to the awkward loading and positioning in this exercise, going, you know, 4-4 is pretty hard. I'm probably doing the sort of two second up and down rate here with the cadence. And I was hoping to get 10 or 12 reps. I haven't squatted in, in probably years, to be honest, maybe two or three years. And I really, really struggled here. I only managed to get four reps of 80 kilos, which is honestly a little bit sad. So just goes to show that, you know, there is a fair bit of a, a different demand um, to the squat as compared with just doing a leg press. I think I have plenty of quad strength, but it's very obvious to me that my glutes and my lower back were just really underpowered in that exercise. So whether I work on that in the future, I don't know. So we're on to our second exercise here, the dumbbell press, six to 10 reps, four, four cadence, so four seconds to raise, four seconds to lower the weight. Uh, the main technique points here are to avoid locking out in the elbow. As you can see, I'm probably taking a little bit far. Might be the camera angle too, because generally I keep quite an exaggerated bend when doing an exercise like this. And the main idea behind keeping that bend in the elbow is to, to put all the emphasis on the chest. The chest is the primary mover here. Of course the delts, of course the triceps will be involved, but we're trying to train our chest primarily. So by keeping that slight bend in the elbow at the top, you're able to, to keep stress on the chest throughout the whole range of motion. And then you wanna get a really deep stretch and take advantage of dumbbells. As you can see, I've got a pretty big rib cage on me. And if I do something like a, a barbell press, you know, I really just don't get good chest stimulation. It switches to the triceps and to the shoulders, which is not what I'm trying to hit with this exercise. So get a nice deep stretch. Some people might have kind of shoulder problems and things like that and, and might not want to go as deep a stretch as I do, but I've always had pretty healthy shoulder joints and I haven't really had any issues training with that kind of extreme stretch, but it's up to you to sort of know how your body behaves and, and hack your range of motion accordingly. But just take that to failure, slow and controlled and just keep driving and grinding with good form until you can't lift it anymore. Now you will have stability issues with the dumbbells. I mean they're, they're a lot more challenging than a barbell or a machine exercise. That's just part of the game. I honestly prefer to do machines, something like a hammer strength thing but like I said many people out there might be doing other sports or martial arts and some of these more demanding sort of coordination exercises will have good crossover for their sporting pursuits. Okay, so we're on to our third exercise, the standing military press. This used to be a, a, a big staple of mine back in the early days, but uh, since moving towards sort of HIT training over the years, I found that it can be a little bit dangerous and a little bit difficult to truly go to failure with the exercise. Um, so I prefer to do some kind of machine weight or, or, or the dumbbells, but I thought I'd show it here today for, for those with, you know, a basic kit available to them or a home gym. Um, the main thing here is the 4-4 cadence. Uh, don't lock the elbows at the top, so pretty similar to chest training, except we're trying to keep the focus on the delts. And if we do lock out, that loads up the joints instead of the muscle, and it gives you a bit of a reprieve or a break. So you always want to hack your exercise, you know, nip and tuck the range of motion so that you work and hit your target muscle as effectively as possible. So I like to do the split stance here. I find that to be a, a fair bit more stable, but you can just put your feet, you know, slightly outside of shoulder width if you like and, and do it in that manner. But my personal preference is this split stance, uh, just so you can keep everything stable because the exercise is kind of, you're more likely to tip forward or back and, and bend the lower back than you are to, to slip left and right. Okay, so we're on to our fourth exercise, the reverse grip chin up. Now I was feeling pretty timid about choosing this exercise coming back from a, a fracture in the back of the hand, but I thought, you know what, it's probably time, it's probably ready, give it a go, load it up with weight. And I was a little worried that using a 4-4 cadence, I was gonna end up, you know, getting two reps and, and, and bowing out and failing quite epically like I did in the uh, 
in the barbell squat to start the session, but it turned out it went pretty good. So I've always had quite quite a strong back and strong biceps, so they didn't let me down. I think I managed to get five or six reps here with, with really, really good form, I think, you know, four, four cadence, two second hold at the top. So everything went quite well. So this is a good exercise. Um, it's very basic, very pure. And the main thing is you just don't want to swing your body around too much, you know, I kind of, I lift my knees a little bit towards the top, but but not in such a manner that I'm kind of swinging or using momentum to, to help me get myself up. I'm just trying to stabilize my body for the duration of the lift. And that way the, the lats and the biceps, you know, do all the work. Okay, so I tried to honor the caveat of using free weights only in this workout tried a few weird little hacks for free weight training of the calves. They didn't work out so well. So if you guys have got any good suggestions for training calves free weight, let me know. I wasn't very good on this day. wasn't creative enough, I guess. So I ended up going back to my old faithful, the leg press calf raise. So 12 to 20 reps, 2-2-2 two, two, two cadence. So because of the short range of motion, I shorten up my cadence to make it a more practical, practicable activity. So two seconds to, to push the toes up to full contraction, two seconds grinding away, and then two seconds lowering the weight and just taking it 12 to 20 reps to failure. So thanks for watching, guys. Sorry about some of the epic fails, but I think the form is good and hopefully we learnt from some of my mistakes today. So please like, share and subscribe and, and hopefully next week I'll have a machine only routine for you guys.